Beans, Ebijanjalo, is one of Uganda's biggest protein contributor in the body. And today, I'm going to take you through step by step on how you can grow beans on a small scale in your backyard or a large scale. So, if it is your first time on this channel, now is the time for you to hit that subscription button and the notification bell for you to receive notifications whenever we upload a video. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being on our channel. Behind me here are the beans that we planted a month ago and in particular they are yellow beans. Yeah, the yellow beans. In Uganda, we have different types of beans and different colors. We have the white ones, the red ones, uh, the brown ones, uh, the yellow ones. But in particular, the ones here are the yellow beans. But to grow these beans in your backyard farm or on a large scale like this, even on a small scale, these are the steps that you should follow as you plant your beans. First of all, if you are to plant beans, you have to first sort them seed by seed seed by seed to make sure that you have the right quality for the beans because if you plant the rotten ones they will not germinate therefore you have to first sort your beans for you to get the right quality to plant if your backyard is well irrigated you can plant at any time but if you are planting on a large scale like this and you have no irrigation methods you can wait for the rain season but particularly in Uganda, we have two rainy seasons and for these ones, we are growing them in April. After sorting your beans, then you will have to dig small pits where you can plant your beans. Usually, we plant one per hole, but I would advise you to plant two in case, just in case. After one week of planting, you will see the beans grow. In three weeks, we will need to do what is called weeding and here in Uganda, we do it manually and behind me you can see some of my friends do the weeding and here in uganda we particularly use holes for weeding the beans as you can see um she is doing it manually but still we have many pests and diseases that will want to attack our beans and therefore today i'm going to host someone who will be taking us through the do's and don'ts on how to grow beans as i told you today i'm going to be bringing someone who has grown beans for a while hello hello how are you i'm good how are you your names please uh my name is ronald and i am happy to be on this channel thank you so much for joining and for watching us from wherever place you are yeah wow so as you've heard he's called ronald and uh, um uh, we're actually here at his farm and his beans are actually doing a very big progress. We can see they are already flowering. And we would like to know, the farmers out there would like to know, how have you managed to keep your beans grow? And this is not the first time we're growing beans. We have been growing beans for a while now. We have um, been growing beans for each season that comes. But uh, yeah, we're also learning and we are open to learning from friends. Uh, but just like you've seen the beans, they're growing, but it takes uh, a few steps, of course, to get it here. Yeah. These ones that you see here are just uh, three weeks old. Wow. And they're at a flowering point. So maybe by the end of the month, they should be very healthy and uh, flowering. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Renard. So, Mr. Renard, uh, the farmers out there would like to know those steps in particular. The steps that you take to grow these beans for them to be as healthy as they are here. Yeah, we can either take up the seeds. No, first of all, you have to get uh, the seeds, yeah. uh, the bean seeds. Usually, we keep some from our harvest. Hey. If you don't, you can still buy. So you can keep some from the harvest yes, and you, you use them. Some. And you, you use them as, as, as seeds, yeah? Yes, so we keep some. And then we sort them out. We sort the rotten ones or the spoiled ones and then uh, plant only the good ones to make sure that they really, really germinate. Now, we don't have a very big um, technology here to grow the beans. We use the rudimentary methods where we bring on people to help us dig. Uh, we first dig, uh, do rudimentary digging. Yeah. Just digging with hands. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, we make small holes uh, where we plant those. 
usually plant one or two beans per, per specific hole to make sure that uh, we have um, high chances of all the beans germinating. Oh wow. So uh, in case I plant one and it dies then? Then that means you, it has failed. But if you plant two sometimes it gives this room to um, the other to grow or the other if the other doesn't grow doesn't germinate then one of them can germinate oh. yeah so okay. of course they grow after one week uh, you will see that they have germinated and you will have to take a few a few more steps uh, to check if there are pests and diseases attacking them you have to spray yeah. usually we are going to of course be able to write for you a description of whatever that we use to spray okay in the description so you also spray beans Yes, we spray them uh, with pesticides mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that they are very okay. But we are open to advice. I heard there are very many ways of preventing pests and diseases mm -hmm. naturally. So we want to explore them. Though we still use uh, an element of uh, uh, organic fertilizers uh, from poultry in this farm. It is also very, very good. So poultry also has fertilizers? Yes. I, thought, I had thought that uh, uh, cow west, is yes. it cow dung? Yes. It's the only manure from, from the animals. Uh. No, after the poultry has one of the best uh, manures to use oh, in wow. such a place, which is very wonderful. So you actually use poultry manure? Yes, and we also do some spraying for pesticides and our beans. You can see the beans are very happy, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they're very, very happy. Mm. Yes. So after them growing and after spraying, what happens next? Uh, sometimes we do a little bit of weeding because we do rudimentary still with the women come and help us. They work with one of our colleagues that works here, mm. uh, Derek works here and they get to do a lot of uh, weeding with the holes to make sure that the beans are actually fresh. Uh, yeah, that happens if you have a smaller piece of land like this. Mm. Uh, but of course in your backyard farming you can also still do, if you do backyard farming, it, you can also still do it uh, by yourself. Okay. So we don't have uh, a lot of sophisticated techniques that we use here. Yeah. So how do you do it uh, in case the, the seasons change? When the seasons change, of course, we have to wait uh, for the next season uh, because we don't have uh, irrigation methods right now to provide enough water for everything. Mm -hmm. But we are working on that to make sure that we have constant supply of beans. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. So, and then uh, when do you expect to harvest them? Uh, now, we, in about three months from now, we should be harvesting this. Three months? Yeah, we should that's, be harvesting this. That's too soon. Yeah, that's wow. very soon. Thank you so much, Mr. Renard. Uh, but then, uh, are these beans for commercial purposes or home use? Well, uh, we grow these beans specifically not for commercial purposes. We yeah. have uh, a charity where the food goes. Oh, wow. And this food goes to touch the sun. And uh, we grow it here to just supplement on our food budget to make sure that the young girls and boys uh, that are on this program uh, that we work with from different slums have food oh, because wow. we give them free lunch at the project. So whenever, whatever that we're going to harvest from here is going to go directly uh, to the charity that we are doing. Oh, that is so kind of you. So uh, those, those young girls and boys out there feed on these beans, eh? Yeah, yeah, they feed on this mm. and uh, Yes, so everyone that is watching, I guess this is the time that I let you know about that, the slum. Uh, yeah, you can follow us on different, different platforms and see where this food goes and how it is impacting lives and see also how you can join uh, Touch the Slum. Oh, so what is your role as in your role in Touch the Slum? Uh, for Touch the Slum, I also work as the executive director for Touch the Slum. Oh, wow. And members, so... Uh, we did it with this, this initiative, we started this initiative to support young people uh, who have never been to school or dropped out of school with vocational skills. But of course we need to provide them lunch to make sure that they are really, 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 really benefiting and they are able to learn. Yeah. Oh wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Renan. You're welcome. Yeah. Actually, I was talking to, to a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to a celebrity. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was Mr. Renard for you. And uh, as he has told you the steps, different steps on how you can grow beans. And um, as you can see, his garden is looking wow. The beans are. Mm. Thank you so much for watching. I remain at Elf Beast and I'm here at the farm. Always here to take you through backyard farming, how you can grow vegetables and different foods on a small and a large scale.
Yeah? Thank you so much. And in my next video, I'll be showing you how we can transplant and grow cabbage in a small area or the backyard.